Welcome to the Starting Over Podcast. I am your host, Edward Sheldon, a.k.a. Dark Logos, and this is a show where we look at the strategies, tactics, and mechanics behind the game of Hero Clicks. Yeah, it's been a bit since uh, our last real video. I've gone through the holidays uh, with Christmas stress, and and trust me, I'm probably the biggest Gamma Grinch uh, there is. Uh, so... <laughs> Definitely, definitely after the last few weeks. Yeah, uh, retail sucks so hard. Anyway, uh, today's show, we're going to announce the winner of the Gamma Grinch giveaway. So uh, stay tuned for that, uh, because I know you all sort of care. uh, Well, really care about that. Uh, Then next up, what we're going to look at is adapting yourself and preparing yourself for uh, 2015. Uh, for the meta, uh, since by the time the show goes out, uh, you're probably it's probably gonna be 2015. So uh, that is mostly going to be today's show. Uh, so uh, let's you know what I'm gonna do something I normally don't do. I normally would say like the winners at the end of the show, um, but <laughs> here's um, here's here. I just want to read some of the emails um, that I got. Uh, because they are freaking hilarious. I, I mean, really hilarious. Uh, so what pretty much I'm going to do is <laughs> I'm going to read you the honorable mention, and then I'm going to read you the winners of uh, the Gamma, uh, tell you the winners of the Gamma Grinch giveaway. But uh, don't feel bad, uh, honorable mentions. You will get something from uh, Dark Logos's, uh bag of coal, a.k.a. the chaff bag. Of of characters long since forgotten by Hero Clicks, um, because I am that Grinch uh, for uh, Clicksmas. Uh, anyway, so let's let's start off with the uh, honor mention, Mister uh, Yelmil. I think it's Yamil uh, Mac- uh, Marchand. Yamil Marchand, and he wrote, "My family tells me the Grinch was based on my person." I not only have termites in my smile, I got radioactive termites that spit hot fire. So uh, <laughs> I I got that when I, I sort of chuckled a little bit. Uh, next follow up is from Abel B. Uh, Abel B. Uh, and uh, his his uh, email starts with this is Abel 98. And I'm not going to say from where just uh, for uh, his privacy sake. Uh, I'm the biggest Gamma Grinch. Why? I took down Weaponer. TK'd him out after perplexing him and picking up an Ultra Heavy and dealt 8 damage to my bud's new Superboy Prime. Oh, that's not enough? How about Morg, possessed by a proselyte, giving him super strength? Hey there, Iron Pharaoh. You double token? Here's a dose of Morg Ultra Heavy plus 2 attack. Love the podcast. Keep up the good work. (laughs) And uh, last but not least for honorable mention, Mr. Harry Dempsey. Uh, from Dial Hero Clicks fame, Dial H for Hero Clicks fame, uh, definitely uh, on. Uh, I think it's settled now that the game's called Bad Samaritan. Um, Mr. Bad Samaritan Guesser uh, of Batman. Uh, he wrote, Dear Mr. Dark Logos, I bring you a tale of a new Hero Clicks player who, once upon a time, uh, his first game, uh, Beat Down, uh, thought to himself, There must be uh, more to this. That player soon went to the interwebs and came across many podcasts, his favorite from form of media. But some of these, while entertaining, were found to be lacking in knowledge. He knew uh, to be out there. So after listening to the now extinct duo attack, the push to regions, and the rare mythical clicks cast, I found starting over and made a long story short, and to make a long story short, uh, am now one of the most feared contenders in the Indianapolis area. We are blessed with eight venues within 45 minute drive. That is why I am the Gamma Grinch. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, I've talked with Mr. Harry Dempsey for a long time, Mr. Pierce Theory. Uh, yeah, we've we've exchanged emails. So definitely uh, <laughs> honorable mention. OK, so uh, here are your winners of the Gamma Grinch giveaway uh, from Boy Meets, Meets World, Mr. Corey Matthews. Uh, Corey Matthews writes, well, let me start by saying thanks for doing the cool giveaway. 
but I would like to go ahead and claim mine due to the fact that I was diagnosed with gamma radiation poisoning two days ago. I've talked to a few doctors and there isn't much time left for me. Uh, BB, uh, well, others know him as Dr. Banner, said that this is the worst case that he's ever seen. Doctor's orders are to play as much hero clicks during the holiday season and to stay away from any family members who might make me angry because supposedly no one will like me when I'm angry. I've yet to see any side effects of the radiation, but I'm going, uh, so, but I am doing as the doctors say, and it seems to help. So when you get ready to send me my medication, let me know. Hopefully the city will be intact after Christmas. I, that, it's full of snide, grinchness, and hilarity. So I, I had to give it up to Mr. Corey Matthews. Hopefully Topanga is by your side, sir. And uh, let me know how that Girl Meets World goes out, uh, goes down, okay? Uh, and last but not least, da 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 Mr. Gamey McPoo, McPoe, sorry, Gamey McPoe, G-A-M-E-Y-M-C-P-O, I kid you not, <laughs> that's, that's pretty much how the email is set up, and it's almost written in the sense that he doesn't even know who I am, nor does he care, he's like, dear sir slash madam, I'm like, I'm a sir, like, like, really, um, it has come to my attention that you might be willing to release a Hulk Heroclix figure into my possession. If I give you a good reason for uh, a reason for why you should. Fortunately, I have a list of excellent reasons, each better than the last. Uh, number one, I read comics, including various Hulk runs. Number two, I have a bachelor's degree in chemistry, so I know a little bit about gamma radiation. Number three, I, ha I have just acquired a job in a lab to better facilitate my development of superpowers. <laughs> Number four, I still stand in front of a modified microwave, safety measures removed slash disabled, in an attempt to gain milder form of the Hulk's powers. Microwave radiation is far less powerful than gamma radiation. Number five, due to an unfortunate incident this past Halloween, my face is still green from my costume, not the Hulk in this case. <laughs> Number six, I have a slight rage problem. It is not an uncommon occurrence for me to punch people in the face. Number seven, my face punching is dangerous as I, like Batman, am trained in martial arts. I'm a trained martial artist. <laughs> Number eight, like the Grinch, I have a dog named Max. We make a great team. Number nine, my hobby during the winter is to wake up hibernating animals and shout, wake up, jerk. Nap time is over. It's time to fight. Number 10. I own a pair of purple pants. Unfortunately, they are not torn to shreds. Number 11. I know how many time zones there were in the Soviet Union. Choose right. Choose me. Sincerely, future winner. P.S. I just shouted, Gamma, Grinch, giveaway. And my nephew joined in. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, I know it's a bit delayed, like, like I said, over a week, but uh, definitely, um, def definitely worth it. Definitely worth it. Uh, you all sent me some great responses. These are the best out of all the ones that I received, and I received a lot. So, uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, so Mr. Corey Matthews and Mr. Gamey McPoe, uh, email me your address and you shall get the Gamma. Grinch giveaway. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, 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 oh gosh. <clears throat> oh, gosh. Oh, man, I need some water after that. <clears throat> mm. Well, it also doesn't help that uh, I went out salsa dancing. My friend coughed and said, oh, man, I'm getting over bronchitis. And then being in the Tarje and having people cough on me. So I think I'm carrying like three different types of diseases right now. And every, you know, it's funny too. Every time I'm like, yep, today's the day. It's been a week since I, I've gotten over that sickness. Let me go get that flu shot. Then somebody does something stupid to compromise my immune system once again. So yeah. Uh, any, anyway, so uh, Corey Matthews, Gamey McPoe, Mr. Harry Dempsey, Abel B., and Yamil Marchand, um, 
send me your info. Uh, like I said, Harry Dempsey, Abel B, and Yamil, you're going to get something from the chaff bag. I don't know what it is, but it's going to be old and, and probably crappy, but it's going to be old. So there you go. All right. So let's get into today's show. Um, let's talk about improving ourselves for uh, the future going into 2015. Um, I'm going to escalate from casual player into more advanced stuff as the podcast progresses. So uh, bear with me. Um, because, uh, my phone decides to chirp at the worst time. Uh, but bear with me, um, mainly because a little bit is, this is free flow, but, but mostly a lot of people might want to say, like, I want to jump to the, uh, the end so I can hear the more advanced stuff. And, and you might hear something earlier on, uh, that would be useful to you. Okay. So. Let's start off. Uh, if you don't have a Hero Clicks notebook, freaking do that. Like, like for real. Like that should be your number one thing this year. If you're even close to serious about getting better about Hero Clicks, uh, if you don't memorize the pack, please memorize the pack. It's worth it. Um, I, I know some people are like, but I have able to hold the power and abilities card. Definitely in the age that we're in now. Um, yes, that's useful, but you need to be able to memorize the pack so that you're able to get those subtle nuances as running shot gives me a free action to make an attack. Okay. So if I use perplex, I can't use running shot. If my opponent has the green lantern battery on the field, you know, subtle things like that. Um, also, it helps you get ready for future exploits, uh, potentially in in the meta once you see a power. Uh, the next thing that I would say is make sure that you and your your HeroClix buddy have a really good conversation uh, going into next year, whether that is, uh, you know, meta or trading, you know, or, or just, you know, primarily figuring out what the heck is, is going on with this game. Um, those are big things that you, you need to sit down with uh, and, and figure out. Uh, the next element I would say is have a steady conversation with your judge. If you are the judge, if you play anywhere else, talk with that judge. You know, um, the main thing that you really want to do at this stage is have a healthy relationship with your judge make it so that they're able to talk to you you are able to talk to them this is going to be key um, because the way things are going prize support is giving us like rare meta gems it's not like oh okay every every set we're getting like killer stuff that's really not happening what's what's going on is like maybe once every other set one figure is broken or someone finds a way to break that figure. Um, so you might want to really, really go in and talk with your judge, mainly just so that you can set up a rapport so that you can get the events that you want to do and, and at the key times. And I would say don't abuse that. Don't abuse that. Oh, hey, uh, I, I, I want this to be this week and the next week that don't don't try to plan all the events. OK, that's that's it makes you sound petty. All right. So make sure that you, you stay on top of talking with your judge. Make sure that you're also offering fun things uh, for everyone. And then more importantly, you want to create a situation where you are pushing yourself and not just doing meta, 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 meta play. Um, you want fun play and you also want to put yourself in a situation where people will appreciate your ideas, uh, but not only just appreciate your ideas, but also are willing to go with you when you want to go hardcore. Okay. So like I said, make sure you're talking to your judge, making your judge your number one ally. The next thing that we're going to do is talk to our venues, um, venues at this stage in the game, you know, have a strong voice of what they're going to buy. Are you going to be able to enjoy product uh, with, you know, with that venue? Also, are you going to be able to afford the product that that venue is, is putting out? And then letting them know, like, yo, this is my price range. What's your profit range? We can work something else where, where you're profitable and I get things that I want on a reasonable basis. Uh, because 
<clears throat> a lot of times people are like, well, the venue does this and the venue does that. And if I don't go, there's no venue. And I'm like, well, yeah, there's no venue. And there's a wonderful thing called the Internet. and You don't need product. Like, I, I, I can't tell you how many times that I've taught a lesson or talk with friends or whatever. And we're just like, well, let's just play a game over the, the Internet. And you just, you know, Skype, put up the map, and then you start playing. It's, it's real easy. Uh, I think WizKids is sort of detecting that. I don't think they fully understand the impact of that, though. Um, but the, I will definitely say this. For real-life prizes, yes, you're going to need um, the the physical items there, you know, purchased. But I also think that we're moving to a point now if, if in all honesty, you can't play multiple games on the internet or with people over the internet, um, then that needs to be something that you need to strive for going into 2015. And uh, let me elaborate why. Uh, the, the first is... The one thing Spawn 10, a.k.a. Patrick Yapago, has shown us this year is being able to go into multiple metas, into multiple areas, and win is not easy, but it does ramp up your skill. It can make an already good player into a monster. Just can. Uh, going into 2015, if you have any hopes at the World Championship, at Origin or whatever... Um, then you need to be fully aware of the situations that are in play, that you need meta experience and you need diversity of meta. Uh, if you're not on HC Realms talking to people and making friends, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, you could talk with your local community, but at the same time, you need to expand past your local community. Uh, I have an advantage. I have a show. I get to talk to people from all over the place. I actually have two shows. So... That's one of the major advantages that I have as a commentator. You don't have that advantage. You can talk to me and you can hear what I think is important, which is some good stuff, some good stuff. But at the same time, um, there's things that at where I'm at in playing hero clicks, I might have glossed over something that I'm like, well, that's fundamental. You know, that's basic. You should know this. And you don't know that. And you interact with somebody closer to your skill level or even higher than your skill level. And then they say something. And it's like, oh, yeah, I didn't hear that from Dark Logos. Um, that's one reason why I really pump uh, Dial H. You know, uh, they have a different perspective. They, they put out different stuff than me. They have a different view of meta. They have a different understanding. And so when I listen to them, I'm like, hmm, you know what? That's a good idea. I like that. Sometimes I disagree. Not too often, but sometimes I disagree. Uh, mainly with Austin. Not not too much Hunter. Um, but Drew's value, corner of values, it can be interesting. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> sort of going back is that we're in this situation now where it's, it's not just having friends, but also having... Um, other people to spar with other people's minds that you can bounce things off of having this for, for a lack of a better word, this open relationship with various people where we're able to trustworthily exchange our, our thoughts and, and our mindsets and our tactics and our, and our meta. Um, so yeah, uh, the next thing I would say uh, going into 2015 uh, that I learned this year is don't don't keep the don't operate that the meta has secrets okay there there is no hum, uh, hero clicks illuminati outside of the team okay there the the secret society stuff that was ruling us in in 2008 well let me rephrase that from about 2010 to about 2000 mid 2012 after gen con yeah, mid-2012 mid, mid after Gen Con, it's gone. It, it really is. Once once Ghost Rider retardedness came out, um, the meta was pretty locked down. Same thing with the team bases. The meta was pretty locked down. Um, so that, that created a situation 
<clears throat> where people stopped experimenting because the meta was like lock set and then the watch list came and nerf came and then we had several retirements and then we have rock tournaments and then we have uh people just bringing out you know everything they can uh to gen con and so what we're seeing now is subtlety of skill not necessarily secret tech okay because secret tech quote unquote if you can see me only gets you so far and it doesn't get you into the upper echelons of, of thinking because you're you're never really fully testing it in various environments you're always trying to hide it the one thing i would promote <clears throat> that a lot of people don't really talk about is countering your own tech um i i bring it up and i think some people might over overlook it or not fully understand when i say play x team the following week play the counter to x team if you won like just definitively and the, or at least the core pieces on x team why is that because people are copycats we're mammals we're mammals i i never deny that i'm a mammal i learn by observation i will see things and i will do things there is very little original conclusions that people come to it's all all a collaboration of all the other stuff that you see people do and then you making value judgments okay even even you listening to this podcast you said you know what listening to dark logos has value and merit i will conclude i will concur with what i concur with and tweak what i disagree with and and what i fully reject i just won't deal with you know you you all are going to do that i know i've coached a good amount of you okay so that's just how it goes just how it goes um <clears throat> So that's that's one thing to, to think about is that if you're playing the meta in phases that, OK, I'm playing Kyle. Boom. Do that. Then I play uh, Orange Lantern to counter Kyle. Boom. I do that. Now I play some other <clears throat> some other uh, powers that are hyper unique. So it's really hard for me to be countered by Orange Lantern. Okay, boom. Now I, I do this other thing. Boom. Now I can come back to Kyle because everybody's forgot about Kyle. Uh, and then, oh, look, a new set's come out. Blah, 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 blah. Everybody's going to be playing this, 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 and this because it's popular. I'm going to be playing these counters and wrecking them. Oh, you played Flash? I have Precision Strike. Oh, you, you have, you know, Captain Cold? I have the ability to remove tar uh, tokens and, and stuff off the field so I could deal with Iron Pharaoh and your Captain Cold, you know? So there's, there's a lot of stuff there that you can do and you can be a part of uh, and, and set the tone of those around you. Um, but more importantly, you're able to just stay one step ahead. And that's a, that's a real big deal. Just stay one step ahead. The the next thing that I would definitely say is looking back at what you actually played this year. And and again, if you had your Hero Clicks notebook intact, you're going to see uh, a common trend. And 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 you can do this. And I'm going to probably start doing this. Is that I'm going to put like a beginning of my Hero Clicks notebook now. now I'm going to put 2015. Okay, so that I would know everything from that point on. It's like just 2015. This is a year. Um, because my Hero Clicks notebook right now is almost five years old. Uh, yeah, almost five years old. That sounds sort of strange. I've had that document for five years. Um, so anyway, going, going back, um, you know, set it up. Just say like, all right, January 2015. But look back and then look through the year and say, all right, I've been playing a lot of range pieces, a lot of melee pieces. I've played a lot of shenanigan teams. I've noticed that I have this leaning towards, you know, 40, 60, you know, uh, support and then, and then attackers or, or whatever. Just Just start combing through what your thought process is and start making notes like your end of the year, uh, analysis is like okay this year i built a lot of teams that did this i also noticed that i lean toward you know nurse um construct once that came out i also noticed that i tend to spend a lot of time being concerned about blah 
And in actuality, when I look back at my game reports, because you should be doing that, and we'll get to that in a bit. I look back at my game reports. I didn't encounter half the things that I thought I was. And then on top of that, the things that I thought were problems didn't occur. These other common problems in my design still occur. Boom. That's it. So let's let's break down game re reports. You know, after you make a team, if you played it, just write down how it did or why it did what it did. A lot of times people will just be like, I had a great team. It did awesome. Why? Was every, you know, were you the only person with precision strike and everybody playing, you know, super senses? Then, yeah, you're going to do awesome. It has nothing to do, you know, with your overall skill. It has to do with the fact that everybody brought, you know, pretty much uh, Superman to your kryptonite boxing glove fight. Okay. You, you, you can't, if, if you lose that, then that's more of a problem with your decision making than it is anything else. So you really can't gain a lot out of, you know, just saying, oh, wow, I, I played precision strike every team. Everybody has precision strike and it was awesome. Y you know, you're not going to learn much from that. Um, at the same time, uh, when you're writing up your report, it's going to be like, this is what my I was thinking. This is what I wanted to do. This is what I was concerned about. What I was concerned about showed up or didn't show up. I either won or lost against what I was concerned about. Or these other things occur that are of note. It's real simple. It doesn't even have to be more than two paragraphs, if that. But these little comments uh, allow you to have a flashback into who you were so that you can determine where you're going. Uh, one thing when I look back through my own Heroclix notebook is that I have lots of moments, and I think I've shared this in the past, lots of moments of paranoia, lots of moments of fear, lots of like, oh, you know, am I able to, to overcome this one thing? And when I, I step back and I look at, you know, some of my team building within the last six months, a lot of my team building last six months hasn't been as paranoid. It's been more like, whatever, you know, I care but I ended up designing teams that were like, okay, this is going to press me on this. This is going to, this other team is going to press me on that. So I use my fun to grow my skill. Uh, there's things that I thought like, whatever, this is stupid. You know, this thing is weak. I can always do this other thing. And then when I played them in casual games, they just rocked. Uh, one, one figure I've talked mad crap about was Phoenix Buster Iron Man. Yeah, Phoenix Buster Iron Man. And in low point games, yeah, he's crap. Uh, but I started bringing him out in high point games just mainly because I was just, I, I thought to myself like, oh, whatever, they're going to kill Phoenix Buster Iron Man, ah, da, 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 whatever. You know, I, I brought out the, the cannon and once he gets hit, he's pretty much done. But I started to notice that with his ridiculous range and a few other elements, he is murder. Like he is straight murder. Um, 10 range and if you're able to uh, give him RCE uh, through uh, gizmo or through the power batteries or whatever and then you just team him up with blind Al it's it's a ton of stupid against the standard team and and 400 points 500 points even 600 points this is just dumb okay um, another one of of just silly fun that turned out to be like ridiculously awesome was Captain America Sentinels. Like initially I was like for America, you know, and I was like, man, they're not going to be that good. And then I played it and it's just like, this is ridiculous. This should not exist. And then add in constructs and it's indigo constructs. They become more stupid, like so ridiculously stupid that they, they it's dumb. They shouldn't be able to do half the things that they do. Did I go undefeated using them? No, I, I lost to a Dracula. You know, uh, I just did. I lost to uh, Web of Spider-Man Dracula using uh, the Captain America Sentinel on the team. Okay, uh, because my opponent also had a high level of skill in Infinity Gauntlet and was on Yggdrasil or whatever and had stealth and I had no stealth busting. And he also had like four entities. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so 
I, I hope that gives you some perspective of why that you're, you're going to make reports and why we're going to definitely like just document it just to see like how your your year is going. Where is it going? And, and I'm just opened up my HeroClix notebook and I want you to see like my first entry, just just my first entry of doing this. Zatanna, 72 points. Starro Green Lantern, 90 points. Ray Palmer, L.E. Brilliant Tactician, 20 points. Ice Maiden, 33 points. Wonder Woman from Icons, 127 points. Legacy E. Batman, 94 points. Forbish Man, 4 points, 498. Is it the best team? Probably not from that time. Uh, it's a Justice League team. That's obvious. And I'm using Ray Palmer, L.E. to use that brilliant tactician BS hardcore. Uh, come to think of it, I might need to bust him out again. But he was really only good for a brilliant tactician. And if you're not playing with feats and stuff, he's not that good. But <clears throat> if you look at that, there's this, there's structure. Uh, but at the other end, it's very fragile. Like Zatanna was very fragile. She was from Justice League set. Star Green Lantern. He was really like his first two clicks. Ray Palmer L.E. Yeah, okay. Ice Maiden, Barrier, it's just Barrier. Wonder Woman from Icons. I think it's, no, it might be, is that, yeah, it's Justice League, it's Justice League. Um, Wonder Woman from Icons was a beast back in the day. Still not as good as, not the best beater that I could get for 127. Oh my gosh, Dial H. That, that just rubbed off on me. Oh man. Oh gosh, I just noticed that. Okay, anyway, um Legacy E Batman he's just awesome. So I I can't complain on him. Forbish man, okay, whatever. But you can see there's a lot of growth, there's a lot of nuance, you know, if I even just jump to the middle of my HeroClix notebook and just like just hold down the down button and just wait for it to come to the middle and like bloop. Okay. Um here 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 we go uh, me writing teams uh let's see i don't know what event is this this i think this is for the infinity gauntlet infinity gauntlet um killing the gauntlet user 300 points yeah this is beginning of infinity gauntlet and me just writing notes to myself killing the gauntlet user 300 point tech ideas attacking Fast Forces Supergirl, 100 points. Hypersonic Speed, 4 damage. Gamora, uh, 79 points. Gravity Feed, Drax, 75 points. Lyra, 88 points. Sunboy, 79 points. Peanut, ba Peanut Cap, 83 points. Gideon, 85. Power Stealing, Scroll, Black Bolt, 33. Oh my, 133. I remember when he was the boss. Now he's not that great. Uh, Warlord, 50. Oh gosh, and then I'm like, support. Here's these guys. Like the support Cosmo fifty two points, which I haven't even used him in a long time. Zavin seventy five point TK perplex, uh, aim agent thirty eight points uh, perplex, uh, aim renegade. Gosh, it's been a while since I've heard those names. Rick Jones AE to Captain Marvel perplex or prob, human target forty seven points shape change and target control Beast Boy uh, sixty points uh, Teen Titans and Outsiders, and then just objects. And this is again our first resource. So you can see like just bam smack in the middle of the, the document is just some analysis. And here's my notes. Here's I just wrote, wrote notes. 19 base defense is rare, even rare on top meta pieces. <laughs> oh, gosh, how times have changed. This means that in melee that most defenses are going to uh, going to cap at 18. The current 19 defense figures that could be close to viable is Fast Forces Sinestro, Empirix, Galactus, Sinestro, uh, and Galactus. Sinestro is a big risk with no damage reduction. Empirix and Galactus are one-man teams. When we look at, <laughs> oh gosh, when we look at 12 attack values, uh, we more uh, values, uh, we have more viable options. Steve Rogers, Ice Cap. Oh gosh, Ice Cap. Oh, wow. Gladiator, Sabretooth, Empyrex, Deadshot, Magog, Chase, Surf, Chase Surfer, Doom. Empyrex comes up again. Sabretooth is an interesting addition to uh, to thinking. Ice Cap may be too slow, but helps a ton. Deadshot is the easiest to use. This means I'm working with 11 attack is common. 
which now it's like a 12, which you need to run. And an 18 defense is common. Oh, gosh. I wish. I wish I could go back to 18 defense is common. This is the base stats that I have to hit. The gauntlet user will most be most vulnerable on turn three and turn and six, in which they have two tokens. Um, those with Masters of Evil or Colossal will keep pushing until they want to stop. Oh, gosh, that stranger tech was dumb for that brief period of time. Um, this helps because they are taking damage. At, uh, at the other end, this means that I have to be more aggressive to punish them for their greed. Do I need outwit? I'm facing a target that has PC. Then that means that the support could be disrupted. Anyway, so I, it just goes on with me, you know, for a couple of pages, just writing stuff down. Like, blah, 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 this, that. Uh, and <laughs> this is this is another team I just wrote just real briefly. It's uh, 700 points, 400 points from Galactic Guardians or Incredible Hulk. And pretty much I had, <clears throat> I think I was, I was unemployed um, at this period of time. Yeah, I was employed, then I was unemployed. Uh, I just bought singles, and this really made me refine, like, what I was buying. And <laughs> so here's here's what I wrote. F it all, Fantastic Four, <laughs> Doctor Doom, Infinity Gauntlet, 25 points, Wolverine, <laughs> Joe Fixit, She-Hulk, Invisible Woman, Mr. Fantastic, and new Fantastic Four ATA, 6 points. Pretty much, I just, I knew I was going against Colossals, and I just didn't care. I just made a team. So, anyway, so let's 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 go back. So, going into to next year, you can definitely see how beneficial the HeroClix Notebook is in chronicling um, of your tales of self and self-development and what that means uh, for you, your personality, and your growth. So, all right. Um, the the next thing that I would tell you to do uh, is go to a rock, and this isn't like I get paid by rock, you know, to get people to go to rocks. It's it's not necessarily like that. I do get paid by TCG player to do a podcast, but I don't get paid, you know, by TCG player or HC Realms to be like, hey, y'all go to rocks. You know, I get a commission every time you go to a rock. Which, if I did, that would be hilarious. It would I would get a check at the end of the year for five dollars for how much I would bring in. Uh, anyway, uh, going on. Uh, the main issue that I would say, like, go to a rock, or, or even if I don't want to promote the Whisk Kids Opens, not because I'm pro rock and anti Whisk Kids Opens. I just feel that the Whisk Kids Opens don't allow you uh, to really see meta play. And they don't allow you to test your skill um, as a team designer. It'll test your your skill in luck and your your ability to build a team out of random stuff. Um, but I can't say in a constant like, oh, yeah, you're a great player if you get the best figures from the set and make a team. Oh, there's a team, you know, there's a set with very little prob and you pull the one prob piece and in the best attacker, I can't say that, oh, yeah, you are a great hero clicks player. Uh, I can't say, man, you're lucky and you designed a great team off of being lucky. Or if, like, what happened to me for one tournament, I pulled utter crap, literally utter crap, and went 2-1 uh, and, and went up against the... Uh, yeah, I, I, it, it was Chaos War. I pulled, like two of those Iron Man armors and like no serious attacker, a uh, Ant-Man. No, it wasn't even Ant-Man. It was, what? what's his alter ego? Hank Pym. I pulled a Hank Pym and, and I, I pulled crap. I, pull, I had to play crap. So sometimes, you know, if I went 2-1 off of playing crap, because you say like Dark Logos, that proves that you're boss. Like, not really. It just proved that I was I I had enough skill to play with crap, and win. Like like that's it. Like now, if everybody's playing with crap, then it's equal. Then then yeah, it's back to skill. But it it, it doesn't work like that. So that's why I'm not really too gung ho about WizKids Open now. Now, if you want to go to WizKids Open to get swag or trade, then yeah, I mean they're they're targeted toward casuals. I mean that's pretty much it. But as you already know, this show isn't directed toward casuals. You know, 
the the core 100 and 200 of y'all out there you know shout outs to y'all um because you're deciding to be meta and i mean just look at if you look at um the amount of views like dial h gets which is a large amount it's a real large amount versus what clicks cast did maybe about a year or so ago because they do one once every blue moon whenever steve decides to i'm not even i'm not even gonna bash steve um you'll see like the numbers for uh for dial h are a little bit smaller because just the the casual um the casual listener and the casual player is just so much larger base. I mean, it just is. And every game is always a larger base. So for the pure fact you're listening to, to this show, you're a minority. So, well, <laughs> uh, anyway. All right. So um, going to Iraq and, and the main reason I want you to go to Iraq is for the following. I want to see if you're a say or do player. Uh, go back a couple of episodes. Are you hyper? uh, concentrative, you need to be calm, you know, still heart, uh, calm resolve when you play or, uh, that's say, or doe, do you need to be hype? Do you need to be like raw? I'm going to go rip their head off and, and kill them. And then, you know, bury them alive, which is going to be hard with their head ripped off. You know, um, are you that type of player? I mean, you have to decide that, uh, if, if you are, either say or do and, and the main reason I, I go and say like you're going to be either or and, and not a mix is that it's really to stay calm when you're feeling a ton of emotions i just i just know this from chaplaincy uh i have when i was a chaplain you can be empathetic but you couldn't be fully wrapped up in the motions of everybody around you because if you did they're crying now you're crying now you know who's keeping stuff together you know all of a sudden you know james is angry and then you know, Bill gets, you know, angry at James for getting a motive and it, it gets crazy. You have to stay level headed. So you either can be in the full passion of the moment uh, uh, emotionally or you can be fully in the motion in the moment intellectually. Um, now, note, do I go through life as a hyper brain? I won't lie, probably about 60 percent as a hyper brain, 40 percent as a motive person. Uh and I'm trying to balance that out. I mean, just being honest. Uh, but I, I've, I look at life as a game. Dating is a game. Going to work is a game. <laughs> like there's rules to be followed and there's rules to bend. And, you know, there's things that you can play to make yourself better at the game. Heck, you know, anyway. So when when you look at that, you find out like what type of player you are. The next thing is I want you to have true predators. I want you to have true predators. Now there's a state with predators that a lot of people don't know about. Even some folks say apex predator, blah, 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 whatever. And this isn't a crack at majestics podcast. Okay. This isn't a crack at them, but just dealing with the concept of the apex predator is that there's a predator above all, like your Tyrannosaurus Rex, your, your, your hippopotamus in the water. Yeah. Freaking hippopotamus. We think like, oh, big old fat butt in the in the water. No, those suckers are deadly. They kill crocodiles and stuff. Um, uh, what is it? Lions on the Serengeti and all that other stuff. The bear in the jungle. You have apex predators, yes. But you also have competitive predators that also eat apex predators. Okay. Uh, a lot of folks don't realize that. And they either come in the form of this, the, the pack hunter the pack hunters will will take on uh, an apex predator, like multiple hyenas on a lion or something like that, um, or types of you know. Ah, well, I'm I'm not gonna get into that anyway. So you you'll have you'll have competition with apex predators, and there might at the end of the tournament, yeah, there's one above all, but. You know, that that champion didn't go through unscathed without losses and and without turnarounds and and whatnot. Okay, I haven't I haven't been to a rock nor talked to anybody that played a rock that was like, yeah, I just breezed through the tournament because I'm that awesome. You need somebody that's going to be there. That's just going to rock your world and make you realize like "Mm, maybe I'm not as good as I thought I was. Uh, 
for me, it happened last year with Adam Friedman. I was just like, man, wow, that last game, that sort of made me put some stuff in perspective of how much I had to grow, like just to get to the next level. And even though I did worse at my next rock, the the level of tech thinking that I did just upgraded, like the amount of sidestepping all of the, the BS from the meta and just said, you know what, I'm going to put a straight jacket on you. And then I'm going to have High Father lock you down, this other guy down. Let's see how you do now, homie. Let's see what happens. And that in and of itself, as far as I got, it just happened that, you know, I went against Goku and Goku had a complete counter uh, to my lockdown, which is have more targets than I can lock down. So uh, having people that are able to show you, like you may be, uh, a very strong competitive player. I don't want to say big fish, little pond, but understand in the ocean, you can be a shark or you can be a whale and whales can eat sharks. But at the same time, there's ships in the water and they harpoon whales. But if a storm comes, the ships die. And the whales are fine. Sharks are fine. You start to see where it's going. Just because you think you might be on the top doesn't mean at the end of the tournament um, that you're one of the the more excellent or epsilon players. It just might not. And then swallowing swallowing that, taking in that bitter medicine and just be like, ooh, got to get better. Okay. Uh, Now... uh, you know, sort of wrapping it up, we're going to just say establishing, like we're going to create clicks goals, like hero clicks goals. Uh, first off, we're going to say goal number one, I'm not going broke this year over hero clicks. Uh, goal number two, before I buy lots of hero clicks, I'm going to look at the release schedule. Because if you buy a set and there's like a preset and there's a post set and then there's there's two other sets come coming outside of essentials it's really not worth heavily investing in a set. There's very few figures in all honesty this year that just went up that like, oh, pff, you know, skyrocketed rocketed and stay there. The entities are one of them, but the entities came out sidestepping half of the established mainframe. But other than that, you're like, oh, Bill Asian and Ain, uh what was it? Iron Pharaoh, uh, and and maybe, just maybe, uh Super Scroll Will. You, you know, everything else, you know, I mean, well, some of the zombies, just cause that was zombie BS really. That was just zombie badness. That that's that's just that's pretty much how it was. It's a bunch of zombie fans knocked up the prices of them they weren't hyper meta either they just they just had their moments in the sun um but if if you look at the overall value of of hero clicks they stay low and then definitely if you buy one set behind the price drops dramatically and if you go two sets or farther it, it's like half of that people are trying to unload old stock you know, um, Flash is out. So if you wanted to go buy Deadpool right now, this is the time. Uh, you know, go go buy Deadpool because Galactic Guardians came out and you had War of Light. And, and even if you look at the War of Light, uh, it just prices, they're ridiculously low from your commas through your rares. And you could probably get a full CUR f- like of both Wave 1 and Wave 2 if you play it right for about uh, 80 bucks, like a full CUR. So, I mean, there, there are things for you to think about and things for you to, you know, just assess like economically, I am not going to get hosed over by WizKids this year. That needs to be your first goal. Um, don't get caught up by the new shiny. Don't get caught up by the, the silliness. Um, definitely the ultra chase stuff is something to watch, but, I'm I'm gonna give them a chance on the first two. Um, if if they in in the first two ultra chases, if their idea of fun and comp, you know chase figure hyper chase figure is something that is obviously you know hella broke, you know from 
from a player perspective, um, then yeah, I'm going to be like full out boycott them. So yes, I know I'm like no more, you know, ultra chase and I'm super pissed off mad. I know, I know, I know. Um, but just sort of bear in mind, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give them a chance. I'm going to try to be a less angry Edward this year when it comes to whiz kids. That's one of my goals there. So I got the water jug. I actually got a jug of water. Uh, the gl- I had a pitcher and I would like pour myself a cup and you would hear this whistle sound now and then. That's what it was from the, the air hole from the whistle. And I mean, uh, of the, the top of the, va- well, I wouldn't say vase, but pitcher. But anyway, um, and it's gone. I can't find it. I think my mom broke it really do because it it was like just gone one day anyway going back um our next goal is to sharpen down what we're good at and then start learning intricacies of what we're bad at okay sharpen down what we're good at learn intricacies of what we're we're bad at okay so it there's people like i consult um and and when i consult like one gentleman today I consulted and it was, he was just a flat cannon player, just ranged aggro, just flat. And there's nothing wrong with that. And he's newer to the game. Uh, he could handle multiple pieces and that's not a problem, but he's just a flat, like all salvos fire, kill it. Okay. Reload fire again. Cannons are overheating captain. Okay. Wait for the cannons to, to cool fire. Like that's, I mean, that's just how he was. Uh, so it created a situation when I was talking with him, I'm like, okay, let's just build a team where you just shoot people. Here's your support. Just shoot people. And that's what we did. Uh, and so I would say like he has a big defense and shenanigans weakness. And I don't mean that in a condescending way. Okay. Uh, and, and that's something that he needs to work on, but he hasn't been playing the game long, but for him to establish like, yeah, I'm just a range guy is a big accomplishment. So, so just take time and refine being range guy. What does it mean to have swing? What does it mean uh, to use energy explosion? What does it mean to use psychic blast? What does it mean to have, you know, psychic blast and energy explosion or psychic uh, or energy explosion and precision strike uh, sidestep running shot, you know, um, sidestep running shot, mind control, you know, whatever it is you know, understand, you know, some intricacies and then start saying like, okay, I'm going to start putting in barrier into my game. I'm going to start doing double TK in my game. I'm going to start utilizing smoke cloud for added range defense in my game. Since, you know, I, I you know, the map doesn't allow for whatever, you know, so, cause you can put smoke cloud onto water terrain. A lot of people don't know that you can put smoke cloud on anything, but blocking terrain. You can put on special terrain or whatever else, um, but you can't put on blocking terrain, but you only can put uh, barrier uh, on clear terrain. So, yeah, um, that's that's just something to you know keep in the back of your head. Anyway, uh, going on. So, you know, refining things down becomes important because our growth process is us getting better at the other attributes or the three pillars of the game, you know, uh, shenanigans, uh, defense and aggro. Uh, and, and a lot of people are very good at one or two, very few people are really good at three. Um, and those people that, that are good at three, uh, usually still favor one form or the other. I mean, it just is like, you can be ambidextrous, ambidextrous, which is, you know, using both your hands, but you still have a primary hand. It's just, it's just how it is. Um, but yeah, so we're going to grow in what we're, we're good at, refine that, and then look at what we're bad at um, and understand why. The next thing that we're, we're going to do is we're going to come down and we're going to do something that I, I know this is a lot of folks are going to be like, what, why am, why are we doing this is we're going to establish on average, how much damage per turn our teams are going to do or are capable of. And 
just sort of like put it to the side on your Heroquix notebook. Team, damage per turn, max salvo is boom. And just see if that goes up over the year or if it stays steady. Um, for newer players, that's going to be a bigger deal than older players. For older players, it's going to be pretty steady and it may fluctuate. And then try to lump point cost together and then be mindful of your actions. So if you have 15 figures and five actions, you can't be like, my max salvo is 40. Like, no, that's not happening. You know, you're not going to get 15 figures unless you have a ton of leadership. Okay, so, and even then, all your leadership has to go off for you to do that. So, you know, the main reason we're doing damage per turn is to see how much are we really focusing on offense? Are we able to functionally deal with the tempo of the game? Are we actually able to win the game? Because if you're averaging on a 300 point team, your damage per turn is six. This means that you're attacking with two characters with three damage and that three damage is going through. That is very low. That's very low. Okay, you need to be in eight to nine land. Just just honestly. Uh, either it's like I charge, pick up a heavy, boom, I land in eight or, or, you know, six or whatever it is. And then, you know, I can follow up with a running shot for three. Or you could say like, hey, I have enhancement and I have two base damages of three penetrating damage running shot you know number one running shot number two i've done eight damage like it's literally that simple you know two perplexes off of three damage that's penetrating you know like it, it's real easy to up your damage per turn uh, just a lot of people don't think about damage per turn they're just like well as long as i'm landing hits dark logos it's good the next level stuff is understanding how much damage per turn that you can give out so that you know what your max burst is. When you're able to determine your max burst, there's certain characters that all of a sudden don't seem that scary, okay? For example, Kyle Rayner isn't that scary if your max burst is like eight because you hit that, f that first hit on him with precision strike, he hits a stop click, and then you run into him with, you know, psychic blast or exploit or something, you know, for six and then he's dead or five. I think it's five. But yeah, then he's dead. I mean, there's not much else that he can do. He doesn't have like a second stop click unless he has like a white lantern battery. You know, so keeping those those elements of mind of having high amounts of damage output allows you uh, to understand burst. It allows you to understand focus. It allows you to understand aggro. The next thing that we're going to look at is tempo. This is this mainly lands more in your defense and shenanigans. In between there, um, our goal with tempo is to create either a natural tempo that favors us or a artificial tempo that limits our, our opponent. A natural tempo that favors us or artificial tempo that slows down our opponent and then you might be saying like hold up wait that doesn't quite make sense and then let me explain a natural tempo is my team either ramps up and then does something so by turn four five or six i'm doing that thing there's nothing that you can do about it or there's the your team can be like hey i do this one thing in burst then stop burst then stop burst and then stop i repeat this process just every other turn or two turns then done two turns and then done two turns and then done okay this is mainly seen in hyper aggro um the the tempo is i either ramp up i'm you know i'm moving out i'm picking up a heavy that's me ramping up i, I get tk'd out that's me ramping up i get the backup shooter tk'd out the next turn Okay, and then we just go in. And then from that time, you know, all my support is gradually slowly moving up the field, but the two big hitters are, you know, laying in. Um, 
And so that has its place versus like, okay, I have these three figures and then I'm going to concentrate and shoot on one figure. Boom, that's dead. Shoot the next figure, that's dead. Stop. I can't do anything else on this third turn. Now I want to start again. Focus, fire this one figure. Focus, fire this one figure. Stop. Do it again. Okay. Uh, Artificial control to limit your opponent is I just say that you only can do three in in a 300 point game you only can do two actions you don't have leadership because you didn't think about that oh too bad for you you only have two actions oh I have tons of multi-target end cap and I'm able to target you you know as long as you're within six squares of me boom 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 and I have a 13 attack welcome to end cap land you can see how these elements would artificially slow your opponent they don't just automatically happen. So natural, it automatically happens. Boom, 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 boom. I, I do this thing, repeat, do this thing, repeat. With the artificial control, and again, you can, this more leans toward the shenanigans. You're able to just say, all right, I end cap you. I surround you in barrier. I put smoke cloud under you. Now you have minus one attack. You know, I, I do this to you. I do this other thing to you. Now you have these problems where you're able to say to your opponent, I don't care what your plan is. You're not doing your plan as well as you want to do your plan. So we're going to, we're going to focus on both this year. Okay. Um, lastly, uh, and this is, this is something I'm putting at the end, uh, mainly because if you didn't have the patience to listen through the whole episode, you definitely don't need to hear this. And this is the, one of the most inner, hero clicks game that you need to develop if you want to get better you need to be able to control the i don't care what they think in the stuff that comes out of their mouth about me since um in hero clicks okay i have friends in my venues occasionally they rip me really good about my teams and how cheesy they are and whatnot and how silly it is and oh i landed all my roles and they didn't and and whatnot and and at one point early on that got to me and then i just stopped caring okay when i stopped caring it allowed me to go up a little bit when i went to rocks well when i did the show and put out my thoughts and my tech to help people and whatnot again some people ribbed me and made fun of me and said blah 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 this that and other you suck whatever whatever and then and I, I just moved on. OK, again, I'm not asking you to go out there and make a podcast so you can get emotionally stronger or, or anti fragile. But what I'm more along the line saying is, is that if you truly decide, decide to climb that mountain of of being better or and, and climb the various mountains of hero clicks of schools of thought and, and being a great player and, and travel and, and, and all this other stuff, then you need to definitely get over this sense of oh my gosh, I care what other people think about me. Because if you go uh, to a rock or you go to uh, a Realms Open Championship finals or something like that, or, or even, you know, Origin, Gen Con or whatever, don't don't think for a moment that there aren't those guys there that's like, I'm going to prove that casual can win. They're always those guys. There's always those guys. And then they'll be sitting there saying like, this cheese, this, this PS, this blah, 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 just, uh," you know, and they'll just, they just ruin your dang day. They just do. If you, if you absorb that in, if you just like take that into you as a person, it's, it's just horrible. Just, just leave that alone. So you have to stop caring. And definitely if you're in a hardcore venue, if you haven't developed that, that sense of stop caring about the other folks fun. I, I mean, really, um, I'm sorry for you. You're going to have a really rough time going up that that mountain. I respect your uh, your Bushido, but your Bushido will get you just wiped. Um, I'm not saying, oh, all the time play hyper cheese. That's not it. But. If you're playing something and you call it casual, then daggone it is casual, regardless of what the other folks say, and they'll berate you and whatever. And now, now again, 
if you want to grow your venue and be better, it doesn't mean being 100 percent callous to everything being said. You have to take that in mind. And there's days when you and again, we're not greedy and we establish, do I have the prize? Am I going to play the prize? If I have e, if I'm not going to play the prize and already or I already have the prize, I don't need to play like I need to get the prize. I need to go and play other stuff and design a team that's going to test one of my other areas and grow one of my other areas so that when I go and want the prize again, I'm more formidable and my opponents don't know why. Okay. That's that's the mindset that we have. We're in our pursuit for excellence. We are not going to let others hinder hinder us. If at any point in time you're like during the year, you know what? I need a break from starting over podcast because I'm not thinking Dark Logos is thinking for me and I'm not growing. I'm just parroting Dark Logos. Fine. Great. I'm not going to hate on you. Hope you come back eventually. You know, but pause the show. The show's going to be there. I still still going to do the show. Okay, I built the viewer pace up from like zero. I had like my first few videos, I had 15 views. Okay, now I'm like 10 times that on YouTube. I mean, so I'm not I'm not going to stress if you go take a break. Okay, again, I'm not living off of hero clicks, you know, so anyway, that's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's episode again. Gamma Grinch giveaway. Uh, was awesome and I appreciate everybody that participated uh, you can uh, wow it's been a while oh gosh this is bad <laughs> you can follow me on twitter at start over pod it came from outer space and said may old clicks be forgot and have a happy new year uh, you can follow my random musings find out when the show is uh, up uh, also, I did announce like ahead of time, like on Twitter, I said, what is Gamma Grinch giveaway? Find out. So there, there's occasionally cool little nuggets there on Twitter um, to check out. Also, um, for anybody that still plays, um, what is it? Uh, HCO. I do have an HCO code. Uh, so, uh, you know what? I'm going to put it on Twitter. <laughs> I'm just going to put it on Twitter. So you have an incentive. Uh, The only thing I don't like is that they have these W's next to what apparently is a V. So you don't know if it's several V's or several or two W's in a V. Like it's very unclear. Um, I think that's just bad design. Um, So, hey, there's going to be uh, whoever can figure out the code, whether it's yeah, if you can figure it out, it's yours. Okay. Uh, anyway, you can email me at startingoverpodcast at gmail.com. That's startingoverpodcast at gmail.com. If you wish to opine, keep it piffy, keep it interesting, keep it awesome, baby. Uh, the big thing I want to know was what did you get for uh, Christmas? And uh, was it what you wanted? Was it not what you wanted? Did you get any good hero clicks? So uh, definitely check that out. Uh, you could, you could follow the blog. The blog is mainly there just to put in more complex stuff or just lists things that, that are not suitable for a podcast. Um, mainly lists definitely for your buy list, uh, is definitely f- check out the podcast. Uh, I mean, not the podcast, check out, <laughs> check out the blog and that's starting over podcast.blogspot.com. Also, if you're interested in uh, paid tutoring mentorship, uh, Email me at starting over podcast, and then you can pay me uh, through the PayPal account uh, listed on the blog. If you want to donate to the show, feel free to donate. All money goes back towards the show and towards making the show better, um, such as doing more giveaways. Uh, maybe not Gamma Grinch. Um, that probably is going to be like a one time deal. But if I if I get something else, um, then, yeah, it's going to be awesome. Oh, man. It's been a while. It's been a long while since I've done this, and I guess it's start to show. So uh, here's to 2015 and uh, being better. All right. So thanks for listening. And just like every year, we all have to start over sometime.